Now, if you've been a watch enthusiast for some time, you've probably recognized a very reoccurring theme with reissuing or reinterpreting vintage designs. And although some of them hit the mark in terms of appealing to this new age trend, we also see a lot of them that just kind of come off as pandering to the lowest common denominator in what is currently selling to make a quick buck. But with this Hamilton Intramatic Chrono, we have no concerns of that. And this is also one of my favorite models that the brand makes. So by having this YouTube channel, I always have kind of a long list of watches that I want to do a deeper dive of. And this Hamilton Intramatic was candidly been on my list for quite some time. So I'm excited to finally be able to do a in-depth review of the piece itself. And for me, this is a model that has really just intrigued me. And I think many others as well with again, a lot of people's taste going in the direction of vintage inspired pieces as well as a desire for panda style chronographs as well. The model itself is inspired by Hamilton's Chronomatic from the 1960s. By playing off the looks while bringing forth new age spec for a great wearing experience. But let's look at this watch from a high level point of view. First, we're looking at the reference H3841711. Case size 40 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, case thickness of 14.4 millimeters, a lug to lug of 49 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters, has a sapphire crystal, and is powered by an automatic H31 movement, a modified Valju 7753. The Hamilton Intramatic Chronograph is an interesting watch in its dimensions and how it wears. On my six and a quarter inch wrist, it wears quite well with its 40 millimeter case diameter, with its large crown and the extended pushers on the crown side of the case, but given their location, do not affect the wearing experience in my time with it. To add to this point, the watch's steel case has an angled profile with the help of thick tuck lugs on the consistently polished case. This slanting of the lugs helps considerably as the lugs on this piece are quite long. And if it was not for their sharp angled down kind of positioning here, it would make this watch quite harder for me to pull off. This trajectory also helps with any flaring that comes with leather straps that you decide to pair with this watch. That said, I would be lying if I said I didn't think that some smaller lugs here in length would be nice to see, especially considering that the old school chronomatic had much more compact lugs that I believe would translate actually pretty well with this modern design. One important note when evaluating this piece is that it actually tends to wear differently than that when it's just lying on a table, mostly in regards to its thickness. And although I don't want to go as far as saying this is a slim watch because it certainly isn't, I did find that it sat nicely on the wrist, even sliding underneath the cuff of my dress shirts, wearing similar to my Maxwell chronoscope in its wear. And considering that watch over the last four years could be up there as the watch that I have worn the most, I think it's safe to say I enjoy this one on the wrist. And I think that comparison with the Maxwell chronoscope just kind of shows the difficulty that comes and how manufacturers kind of work around the thickness that comes with these Valjoux calibers, really getting close to eight millimeters in thickness, which again is a watch in itself on the wrist. And that's also why when you see a chronograph featuring a Valjoux movement is why they tend to be a little bit thicker than other watches on the market. Now, when looking at the recent trends, as well as the entirety of the history of watchmaking, the chronographs have just always been special kind of watches for wearers. But for me, the watches that have resonated the most in terms of chronographs on the market are the ones that are able to take advantage of the extra things that need to be displayed without sacrificing a, a more cluttered design. And I think this watch is a great embodiment of that idea. Looking within the slightly domed sapphire crystal, we have a classic vintage inspired design that is quick to stand out with the help of several characteristics. Starting with the old school Hamilton logo at the 12, it just works so well in this piece. With its stark black printing contrasting perfectly with the quasi white dial that transitions into a warm cream or ecru color when examined in various forms of light. At the six o'clock, there's writing of automatic and a date window nestled towards the bottom of the dial. The window is cut in a square style with a simple black outline of the window that assists greatly in advancing the look. As I always think the simple aperture in the dial with no treatment causes the window to either get lost or simply makes the wash look cheaper in certain instances. So in other words, this small detail goes a very long way. Along the outside of the piece, we have a minute track as well as quarter of a second within to help precise timing of events when using the chronograph and a surrounding black tachometer scale 
that cleanly plays off the highlights of black throughout the dial. Another point of note here that became apparent when looking at the watch closely is that the dial actually rounds out at the end and does not lay perfectly flat, which I have found helps making the dial almost appear that it's like popping out at you. Another vital characteristic are the nicely executed applied indices that look as if they're floating on the dial that include added plots of superluminova on the far side of each marker and help give the piece improved legibility when matched with the loom-filled baton sword hybrid style hands. But for what really brings this dial all together, we have to look at the most notable feature in its subdials, as this is a chronograph after all. The dual register display is horizontally executed, includes a very fine circular finish that just adds an extra level of texture to an otherwise smooth dial finish. The right register measures 30 minutes, and the left measures 60 seconds. And I think it just needs to be expressed again. It's easy to make a dial eye-catching when a watch uses playful or striking colors, However, I always give increased applause when a watch can have the same eye-catching effect with a more muted color profile. It's a big reason why I really just love the Explorer 2, as that watch and this watch utilize contrast so well, which is great in assisting with the important yet functional point of legibility while also providing a spectacular dial layout that draws in the eyes towards the center. Within the Hamilton Intramatic Chrono, we have the Automatic Caliber H31, which is a movement based off of the very popular and really uh, famous face that we find in the program quite frequently, the Valjoux 7753, the less popular, bigger brother of the Valjoux 7750. Two movements that are rather similar in many ways, apart from a couple key differences, most notably being the layout of the chronograph registers with the Valjoux 7750, usually having a vertical layout and the 7753 utilizing a horizontal layout. But the most functional difference between the two has to be the engaging of the actual date window, with the date change in the Valjoux 7753 coming from a side pusher on the side of the case rather than through the actual crown. Which actually I don't mind, it just leaves the difficult choice for the manufacturers whether they want to include a pusher that is easy to engage that will ultimately make the case bulkier, or do they want a small pusher that is harder to engage or requires a tool that preserves the more restrained size on the case? I think I prefer the latter, and that is ultimately what Hamilton opted to do here, but it is certainly an important point of distinction that was also a topic of discussion in my Omega Speedmaster racing review, which I can link to in the description as well. And I don't wanna go off on too much of a tangent here, but I already kind of expressed the difficulty that comes with utilizing these value movements, but there's a lot of pros that go with these movements. These are time-tested movements, uh, and if you're looking for, say, that entry-level mechanical Swiss-made chronograph movement, this is, honestly, these are the best choices unless you're going for a modular uh, type of design, which, again, have their own pros and cons associated with them. Uh, so there's just the difficulty that comes with this, but I think that eight millimeters of thickness kind of off the bat or close to that uh, with these value calibers does make it quite difficult here. But transitioning to one of the upsides of this H31 and why it certainly is worthy of that new name rather than it just being a way to disguise uh, the movement from what it really is, is that it gets a nice boost in its spec since Hamilton is a member of the Swatch Group and as a brand of the group, there usually is access to increased technology provided within these value based movements. With this H31 getting the benefit of an improved escapement regulator for improving out of the box precision and an improved mainspring in order to lengthen the power reserve significantly, elevating this movement to a 60 hour power reserve in comparison to the 42 hour base. To look further into the wearability and function, we should probably look at the set of pushers on the side of the case, with two traditional pump pushers at the two and four, with the one at the two used to start and stop the actual chronograph, with the four in traditional fashion being able to reset the chronograph. And as a result of this, it certainly makes this piece that much more compelling when comparing it to the other chronograph watches on the market containing popular value movements. Now looking within the strong trend of sports watches nowadays, a lot of that can be contributed to the rise of the chronograph, with the Rolex Daytonas, both vintage and modern, really spiking in price as well as seeing a lot of uh, limited edition Omega Speedmasters flooding the market as well. 
And with that now leading the charge, a lot of brands are now following suit, creating their own chronograph designs or reinterpreting chronograph designs uh, in recent years to get kind of a quick grab at the cash. And with many going this way, th there are some brands out there that just end up cannibalizing what little respect their brand had in the process. But with this Hamilton Intramatic chronograph, you don't get any of that. You get a design that is tasteful, that is on trend, while also being timeless, playing off a storied model within Hamilton's archive, and is packaged at, yes, a nice chunk of change. But for those looking for a great looking chronograph, this one is hard to beat for the price. And to interject my personal opinion, is one of my favorite watches that Hamilton currently makes. All right guys, so if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Uh, that's a great way to help us out. So please do that if you can. Also as well, what's your favorite entry level mechanical chronograph on the market currently? And I know entry level in chronograph, it does end up having the price skew a little bit higher than you would say maybe normally, but I'd love to see comments down below and what you guys uh, really enjoy. Also guys, if you're in the market for any watches or watch straps, definitely be sure to check out teddybalbasar.com and Bob's Watches, a great way to support the show as well. And also follow me on Instagram. We do exclusive giveaways. I've been posting a lot of awesome pictures of watches as well. So definitely be following me there to stay up to date with me and what's kind of coming up next. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.